Hello, and welcome to Beat the Nation, Sats Week 4, with me, Mr. Barton. Now, what is Beat the Nation? Well, thousands of students all around the country have sat a Sats Mixed Topic Revision Quiz on my diagnosticquestions.com website. And as you can see in front of you, I've selected three questions from that quiz. But these just aren't any old three questions, oh no. These are the three worst answered questions from that quiz. And I'm going to set you five challenges. So challenge number one is, can you get each of these questions correct? Challenge number two, out of these three questions, what do you reckon the worst answered one is? And then, do you reckon you can identify the most common choice of wrong answer for each of these three questions? Challenge four, why might a student choose each of these wrong answers? And finally, and I think this is the hardest one, if a student that you knew had chosen one of these wrong answers, how would you help them? How would you explain to them, nicely of course, that they're wrong and that you're right? So what I suggest you do is you pause this video now and you work through these questions with these five challenges in mind. And then you, when you're ready, you can hit resume and we'll go through them all together. Good luck. Okay, welcome back. Have you got your answers? Nice one, let's do this. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, to build up a bit of drama, is I'm gonna reveal these questions in reverse order. So first up, this is the least worst answered question out of those three. And it is this question here. So what have we got? We've got Jack and Bilal share stickers in the ratio two to three. If they have 60 stickers all together, how many stickers does Bilal have? Which of these calculations would not be a step in finding the answer? Well, do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna work out the answer and I'll see what my calculations involve and then we can compare those to each of these four choices. So we've got Jack here and we've got Bilal here and they share these stickers in the ratio two to three. And in total, we know we've got 60 stickers to play with. So how are we gonna work out how many stickers Bilal has? Well, the way I do this is I think, well, Jack's got two parts and Bilal, Bilal's got five, uh, three parts. So in total, they've got two plus three, which equals five parts. And those five parts, well, they must account for all of these 60 stickers. So what's one part worth? Well, to get from five parts to one part, we divide by five. So to get from 60 stickers to one part, we're also gonna divide by five. 60 divided by five, I think that comes to 12. So each one of these five parts is worth 12 stickers. So let's go back now, we had Jack and we've got Bill Al. Jack's got two parts, Bill Al's got three parts and each of those parts is worth 12 stickers. So I think that means that Jack has got two lots of 12, oops, sorry, which I think is 24 stickers. And I think Bilal's got three lots of 12 and three lots of 12 are 36 stickers. What's a good way to check whether we've got this right? Well, if we add up those stickers, 24 plus 36, I think that gives us the 60 stickers that we know we have to play with from the question. So which of these uh, steps have we used throughout this calculation? So 12 times three, have I ever done that? Well, yeah, I have here. I have my three times by my 12 to get to my 36. So that, yep, that's been used. 60 divided by five, did I ever do that? Well, yeah, that's that there. 60 stickers shared into five parts. Two plus three, did I ever do that? Well, yeah, I did to work out the total number of parts. So that was in there. 60 divided by three, no, I never did that because even though it's Bilal has three parts, I don't have to share the 60 stickers by those three parts. I've got to remember that there's, there's Jack's two parts as well. So I think that is the correct answer. That's the step that's never used. Let's see if we're right. Whew, yep, we've got it right. That is good news there. But look at this here. Only 46% of students also agree with us that that's the correct answer. There's loads of students who've got each of these wrong. We've got A, 19% of students think that two times three doesn't come into play. And C, 19% of students think two plus three doesn't come into play. Why don't students think that? Let's have a look at some of their choices of answers. So there's a student who thinks that the answer, the correct answer is A. I think it's 60 divided by three would equal 20. I definitely don't think that 12 times three will be a step because in the whole question, it has nothing to do with 12. So yeah, this is a student thinking, well, where on earth does 12 come from? 12 isn't mentioned in the question, but we've seen when you do 60 divided by five, that's where the 12 comes from. 
What about a student who thinks the answer is C, doesn't think that 2 plus 3 is involved? Well, they have 60 stickers, 2 plus 3, and if you want to find how many they have, you've got to divide by 2 or 3. Again, it's the same problem. This student hasn't realised that actually you need to do 2 plus 3 to give you the five parts that they've got in total. How did you get on with that question? Did you manage to get it right? And also, did you manage to anticipate where students would go wrong with it? Let's have a look at the second worst answered question. And it is... Oh, fractions. Now, fractions are a minefield of misconceptions. It all goes wrong with fractions, and this is a particularly difficult one. So let's have a look here. We've got four over something, and we've got this sign here, and we've got 20 over 35. Now, the first question is, what on earth does this sign mean here? Well, that means less than. When it's pointing that way, that sign means less than. So we know that this fraction here, 4 divided by A, has got to be less than 20 over 35. Well, I think a good way to start this is let's pretend that it, we wanted to find the fraction that's equal to it, because then it's going to be easier to compare. So to find an equivalent fraction, we've got 4 multiplied by something gives us 20. Well, I think that's 4 multiplied by 5. So A multiplied by something has got to give us 35, or 35 divided by 5 has got to give us A. So I think 35 divided by A is 7. So I think we can say that 4 sevenths is equal to 20 over 35. But that's not our answer, because what we want is 4 over something is less than 20 over 35. So how do we make a fraction smaller? What do we do to the denominator to make a fraction smaller. Well, if you think about denominators being the amount that you share something between, if you want to end up with a smaller amount, you need to actually increase the denominator. Think about that. Think if you've got four lots of seven, and then you've got four lots of four out of eight, four out of nine, four out of 10, the bigger this denominator gets, the smaller the amount that you're getting because you're sharing it between more people and more things. So actually, if we want this fraction to be less than 20 over 35, we need to increase this denominator. So I think four over eight is a good choice for this one. Have we got it right? Let's have a look. Yes, we have, but look at that. Only 38% of students agree with us. 40% of students think that seven is the correct answer. Where would seven come from? Well, we've seen this, right, with our working out. Seven is definitely involved, but seven is the number that gives us an equivalent fraction, not a smaller fraction. And indeed, if you read some of these students' answers, it's a beautiful explanation of how to work out an equivalent fraction. But again, we've got to read this question carefully and think that actually... The question is not asking for an equivalent fraction, it's asking for a fraction that is smaller. Okay, which brings us to the third and final question. Remember, this is the worst answered one out of those, and it is this one, another fraction involved. Right, what's going on here? So we've got Sally, she's got two thirds of a whole cake in the fridge, right? This will be the worst drawing you've ever seen, but here's me cake, and here's Sally. So she's got here, she's got, Let's try and divide this up into thirds. Oh, this is already I'm regretting doing this. There you go. There's me cake divided up into two thirds. So Sally in the fridge has got two thirds of a cake. That bit's gone. Two thirds of a cake. Robert comes along and Robert eats one third, not of the whole cake, but of this piece, this two thirds piece. Robert is going to take a third of that. So something along the lines of that amount. So the question is... What fraction of the whole cake has Robin eat, Robert eaten? So it's got to be something to do with two thirds and one third. But the question is, which of those operations do you do? So the way I think about it is this. If you want one third of something, so one third of something, which is what we want. Robert eats one third of Sally's piece. You multiply it. A third of something, you multiply. If you can't think about it of, of, in terms of thirds, think about halves. So if you want a half of 10, you do a half multiplied by 10, which gives you five. It's the same with thirds or any fraction. A third of something means you multiply. And what are we multiplying it by? Well, we're multiplying it by Sally's piece. A third of two thirds. Just because two thirds isn't a nice integer like 10 is, doesn't mean we change the rules. We want a third 
of two thirds. Now, the question hasn't asked us to work it out, but we might as well for a laugh. A third of two thirds, well, when you multiply fractions, you multiply the numerators, one multiplied by two is two, and you multiply the denominators, three multiplied by three gives you nine. So the piece that Robert ends up with is two ninths of the whole uh, cake. And if you look at my terrible drawing, I'm claiming this is Robert's bit here, and I think hopefully you could imagine that that's roughly two ninths. If I split that in two, there's a ninth. Could you imagine that that's gonna cover nine pieces around there? Maybe. Again, it's not the best diagram in the world, but a third of something means a third multiplied by something. So I'm claiming the correct answer to this is B. Now this is a poorly answered question as we know. Let's see how poorly answered it is. Look at that. Only 32% of students got this question correct. What's the most popular choice of wrong answer? It's D, subtract. Now, why would students be doing two thirds subtract a third? Well, I'll tell you what, I've got three of their um, explanations so you can get into, get into their minds yourself. So look at that, we've got this idea of two thirds subtract, one third to have one third left over. But Robert isn't eating a third of the whole cake, Robert's eating a third of Sally's cake, so it doesn't quite work like that. Then we've got one here, now this is interesting. This student's saying that if you multiplied, the answer's gonna get bigger and they know that, that, that um, Robert's gotta eat a smaller piece of this, this, uh, this cake. But multiplying doesn't always mean you get bigger. It only gets bigger, the answer, when you multiply, when the thing you're multiplying by is bigger than one. Here we've got two fractions we're multiplying, so it's fine for it to go smaller. So that doesn't quite work, that logic. And finally, you get this one here. It includes the word remaining. And that is vocabulary used with most subtraction questions. Well, it may be, but that doesn't mean it's always going to be the case. And this is a big lesson in reading this question super carefully, just to make sure that the question is actually asking what we think it's asking. Wow, they were three tricky questions. How did you get on with those? Don't worry if you struggled, as we've seen thousands of students struggle with these. But it's best to confront them head on, and hopefully some of these explanations made sense. Um, if you're interested in trying more of these quizzes out, if you go to diagnosticquestions.com forward slash revision 2019, you'll find 20 of these quizzes um, on a whole host of topics and you can have a go at those. And if you're a teacher and you're watching this and you want to set your students up on this, if you head over to ed.co.uk, you can set this up as a scheme of work or as individual quizzes. Um, and challenge your students on these. It's all completely free. And if you want to get your students registered on the system, drop us an email to hello at ed.co.uk, ideally attaching a spreadsheet with your kids' names and their class names on there, and we can get your students uploaded to the system. As I say, all completely free. And I'll be back with another Beat the Nation soon. Take care and bye for now.